So wait a minute, you're telling me that you could literally just like make the taskbar appear at the bottom of the screen? Yep. So I can just like talk about a version of Windows and then the taskbar and desktop kind of like appear? Sure. Cool. All right, you get everybody ready? Okay, here we go. When it comes to operating systems, there's really only one name to talk about, and that is Microsoft Win... Hey, that's not right. Over 30 years ago, or at least in computer years, 17.4 billion years ago, IBM came out with the original IBM PC. Now, this IBM PC came with an operating system, and this operating system was called DOS. DOS was dark, and it was ugly, and it was single-tasking, and there was no mice, and it was all darkness and ugliness. Until one day, a company called Apple Computer came out with a very clever little computer that they called the Macintosh. It kind of changed the game for personal computers. And IBM, as well as other companies who were in the PC business, woke up to that fact and began looking for a new kind of operating system that was as slick as a Mac's OS, but with the power and robustness necessary for office environments, the business world that IBM had really become a part of. And as a result of that, they came up with something called OS2. OS2 was an amazing operating system for its day. It was the first time we saw a graphical OS. It was the first time a lot of us uh, Microsoft people ever touched a mouse in our entire lives, but it was a bit bulky. Interestingly enough, in the meantime, Microsoft was developing something called Microsoft Windows. And when they came out with Microsoft Windows, the very first version, Microsoft Windows version 1.0, was a very interesting animal. It doesn't look anything like the windows we know and love today. There's no taskbar, there's none of the standard pieces, but if you look around, you can find a recycle bin. That was kind of cool. The important thing is that these first versions of Windows ran on top of DOS. You still owned DOS, you still booted your computer into DOS, but then you got to that C prompt and you typed in Windows and you hit enter and you brought into this graphical interface. These early versions of Windows, which ran on top of DOS, Windows 2.0, Windows 2.86, Windows 3.86, Windows 3.0, Windows 3.1, all basically worked the same way. There were improvements in the interface over time, but the big issue that really came into play was something called Windows for Workgroups. Windows for Workgroups changed the game because for the first time, I could buy an operating system that was network aware. Today, we don't even think about it with all our versions of Windows that all come with all the networking. But before that, we were, had to use third-party tools with scary names like Banyan Vines and Novell Netware. But now, all of a sudden, Windows incorporates the power of a graphical user interface along with network capability and made an incredibly new concept, the basis for what we know Windows to be today. The downside to this is that it was still running on top of DOS, and as a result of that, it was very limited in terms of the amount of memory it could use, the types of multitasking it could do. It couldn't take advantage of the full power of processors. So in the meantime, Microsoft is inventing a new super version of Windows. Now there's no DOS underneath this. This super version of Windows, which came out in the very late 1980s, arguably early 90s, was called Windows NT and Windows NT changed the game. Windows NT was designed to be able to run with different types of processors. It was super multitasking. It could take a lot of memory. It was a robust, powerful file system called NTFS. It was so cool that Microsoft actually thought that it was too good for normal people. Microsoft developed Windows 95 to take advantage of a lot of the power of Windows NT, but providing a more intuitive, user-friendly interface. This is the first time we got to see a start button and the taskbar and the desktop and the recycle bin, all in the places that we know and love them today. Windows 95 changed the game for us because there was no more true DOS underneath all this. There was improvements to Windows 95 with names like Windows 98 and Windows ME, but 
even though they didn't have DOS, they had a lot of DOS heritage built into them. A lot of the code was based on DOS and not on the full 32-bit power of what we see with Windows NT. And it wasn't until around 2001 came along that we finally began to break away completely from the DOS world, and that was with Windows XP.